Hello everyone out there in internet land, welcome to Telling Tales, we make atmospheric tabletop role-playing games, we play them for you here on Twitch. Um, yeah, hi, it's Coriolis Night. Uh, Coriolis is a lovely sci-fi uh, TTRPG from Free League, who are one of our favourite creators, we're not sponsored to say that, um, we just like them a whole bunch. Um, and as per usual, we're going to be playing an actual play session here for you. And as per usual, our stream manager is the wonderful John, who will be tinkering around behind the scenes, uh, moving around images and cams and cam banning endless bots from chat. We've had a lot of bots recently, haven't we? We have. And unfortunately, I, I haven't been able to ban any of them because Steve, Steve always gets there before me. Even if he's not on the actual stream. Um, we'll get there. We'll get there before before John. Um, so as a result of that, we are considering John's uh, future with the company. Um, that's, fair. that's fair. It's all fair. Uh, we wish John well in his future endeavours, um, as long as those entail, entail um, stream managing this tonight. Um, so yeah, if you see John pop up, don't worry about it. It just means that something's gone horribly wrong. Um, so let's do our promo for the evening. Um, until the very end, at least. There's a bunch of links down below. There's links to our YouTube and to our Twitch. You're watching on one of them. Please do check out the other. And if you feel like it, then, um, you know, subscribe and follow and all that good stuff. Um, there's links to our social media. Check us out there. There's links to our Discord. You can join that and talk to us about all things role-playing. Um, there is a link to our Patreon um, where you can find various goodies um, like character creation videos and Patreon access in our Discord. Um, and even if you're feeling like a big spender, you can get me to run a game for you and your friends. Um, I don't know quite why you'd want that because clearly I run too many games already and you'll be getting the real scrapings at the bottom of the barrel. Um, but, you know, why not? Why not give it a go? Um we run three weekly streaming series here on Twitch. Mondays is Call of Cthulhu, and Tuesdays is Blades in the Dark, and Wednesday is Coriolis currently. Um, they all start at 8 o'clock p.m. BST, um, so be sure to tune in for them in the future. We also run uh, monthly one-shots on the first Saturday of every month. Um, a bunch of VODs of those is over on our YouTube, things like Troika and Alien and Mortborg and The Expanse. Um, and the next one of those is coming up really quite soon. That's uh, the, the end of next week on Saturday, the 3rd of July. Um, we will be playing Honey Heist, uh, which will be run by Johnny, our regular Monday night um, GM. And yeah, it's all about bears in hats heisting honey. Um, so in keeping with our general um, grim, dark um, aesthetic there. So that will be good. I can see from the private chat that Mike is really trying to break me during this promo, um, but he will not succeed, dear viewer, because um, partly because this is a very controlled promo, and also partly because um, I am prolonging the promo as long as I can, um, because one of us hasn't managed to log on yet. So I am essentially vamping here for you in a very slow way, uh, and mainly doing it by telling you that I'm doing that. Um, but I can only do it for so long, so let's bring on the first player uh, to talk about our session last week and it's um it's the man who tries to break me to make me horribly corpse on camera it's mike um mike who plays sadira hi mike hi matt hi uh, hi um are you um saddened by uh, your lack of ability to make me laugh on cam with yogurt based jokes <laughs> yes very sad yeah, I thought you would be. Um, so, um, at the beginning of the last session, um, we could talk about some vaguely about stuff that happened in the first session, but the sum of it is is that your crew has crashed unexpectedly on a planet. You are the only survivors of the ship, and now you are lost um, on you know on an unknown planet in the middle of a vast su seeming savanna. Um, and uh, Sadira, luckily Sadira was on hand because some of the people at the beginning, just after that crash happened, were uh, a little the worse for wear, weren't they, Mike? Yeah, so we initially thought that everything was okay and then our lovely GM uh, informed us that things weren't as okay as we thought they were. So, yeah, we were all quite battered and bruised. Sadira herself had some uh, broken toes. Um, I think Clavier had some internal bleeding is that right i think that adam had 
like a lacerated kidney, was it, or something like that. And Hamza had, what did Hamza have? They have this written down somewhere. Uh, I think he had broken ribs. Um, that's right, yeah. was yeah. also made kind of like insensible by the, the, the experience of it. Uh, maybe also triggered by some event in his... In his past, you got a very good memory for horrible mortal wounds on people, Mike. Yeah, it's um, just how my mind works. Yeah, you should figure out a way to monetize that. <laughs> That's my side hustle. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, that was that was like the the kind of immediate aftermath of the crash, really. And then we started to move on to like, well, working out where we were and salvaging things and things like that. Absolutely. And speaking of said salvage, uh, let's bring on Stephen, who plays uh, Hamza. And um, yeah, hi, Stephen. Um, how are you tonight? I'm pretty good. How are you? Excellent. Thank you. Um, so yeah, wreckage was wreckaged and had to be salvaged. So yeah. how did people go about that? I think as, as people started to feel a bit patched up and, and better, they started kind of raking through the wreckage to see... Uh, all personal items that they had or things that would um, maybe help with survival. So I remember there was uh, there was a Vulcan um, carbine, like a rifle that came out. So we have and a power fist. So we have some weaponry. Uh, we found some, uh, some water rations and food rations, which were almost immediately divided up between the party and consumed. Absolutely. Uh, so I, I suspect that that's likely to become a, a feature of our medium term <laughs> survival is finding more of that stuff. Absolutely. Um, but we, we kind of got on our feet, you know, at least for the short term. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's a fair description. Um, we are still waiting on the person who would have come out next, uh, but that's fine. Let's bring out Chris, and Chris can pull double recap duty. How about that? He loves it. He loves it. Hi. Hi. Um, so Chris plays Luir. Um, the pilot, um, so clearly someone who really did their job well. Um, oh, and, don't uh, want to swear, Dime. <laughs> why there don't will be you, consequences? Uh, why don't you tell us um, what the group did um, after their wreckage search and kind of uh, take us through to the to the end of last session? Yeah, so we kind of realised. Um, first off, we figured out where we were. Um, well, I figured out where we were. Um, so we are in a, a in an occupied system. Um, not that that helps too much. Um, but uh, this is a, t a ternary system, which, as we began to learn, does weird things to the day-night cycle. So we did get a, a bit of a rest in, and um, we woke up in the light of, of the blue sun, as one of the three suns still above the horizon, and decided to do a recce. So um, we went off. Um, and we picked. We basically went towards the giant pyramid, which we have. We have it on semi supernatural um, uh, information. Might be the best place to, to head towards, thanks to some uh, icon intervention by. I think it was. I think it was Adam. I think it was Sam's character who made the roll. But anyway, um, Sam's character was very useful for this because he does have a little drone with him and um, managed to help us do some... Uh, I think you'll find the drone is actually Sadira's. Oh, okay. Thanks. Um, yeah, Sadira had a, a handy little drone friend. Um, so we did a bit of a, a walk, a bit of a death march, because we're not exactly in the best of shape right now. Um, but on that march, and with some um, pretty exemplary roles on the, on the drone spotting operation, we discovered a, a glint far in the distance, and then we discovered a um, some metallic objects slightly nearby, and then we kind of quantified the distance a little bit better. So we've got about thirty, I think, kilometers to the big pyramid, or tw twenty. I think. Oh, 12. 12. 12, is it? Okay. Yeah. Where did I get twenty from? Never mind. Um, and if, if it was on the horizon, and it was if you could see twenty kilometers kilometers away on the surface of a planet, the planet would be col uh, colossal in size. Um, yeah, and then we, so what was the next step then? So we basically got about as far as our legs would carry us away from the place and then kind of stopped and decided what to do next. And we were thinking of doing a grand tour to catch both the sparkly metal things and... 
Absolutely. Yeah. But while we talk about what to do next, let's not talk about what to do next. And let's let our fourth player, <gasps> Sam, Fire. talk about what to do next. <sighs> Chris didn't have to pull double duty after all. It's just a, it's just a <laughs> hot swap of the uh, the recaps. Sam is with us now and Sam plays Adam. Hi, Sam. Hello. Um, what recap point are we up to? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a good, that's a very good question. Um, so basically, t- tell us about the watering hole. Tell us about going um, kind of... Chris has said how, how it was spotted with the with the drone and, and you're heading off there to the to the watering hole. Yeah, so we'd... Uh, I mean, we kind of... Uh, the journey to the watering hole, I think, was pretty un- uneventful. When we got there, I, th- I think we didn't know for sure it was water until we got there, so we were all quite happy about that. It, it, I think we all had a had a drink, filled up our canteens. Um, seems like that will be important. There were a few animals there. Um, and we basically decided that we would shoot one of them for food. Um, we went all 100% in agreement, but that, that has seemed the best option overall. Uh, the size of this animal was in some debate potentially the size of a tapir, potentially the size of two lambs strapped together, depending on which, which you prefer. Um, but we did. Uh. <laughs> it was a very veritable uh, buffet of animals, I would say. And uh, we we eventually shot... He come, shot. Look, he comes in late. <laughs> and then these these verbal daggers under the table. Uh, we did. We shot, we shot one, I think, pretty successfully. Um and we kind of went to pick it up uh, with the intention to take it back to camp and cook it and eat it, I think. Um, and the only other probably completely minor issue was that I think Lavia saw uh, a, a pair. I, I say a pair, but actually four eyes uh, kind of watching us at some point. And uh, they, they quickly disappeared. But don't know what creature they belong to just yet no and i th- i think he'd um he'd like heard noises from this creature as well mm. um at some point prior to that but then had had a sense of kind of maybe being followed um sorry i'm just trying to fix my mouse cuz as always the only time it starts to uh, break down is during streams <laughs> um so yeah that's where we left off last week i think lovely lovely um, so we're going to pick off, uh, pick up more or less where we left off, uh, with you arriving back at the camp. It's now um, kind of, you know, you're you're still under the light of this blue sun. Everything around you, the, the entire savanna is bathed in this blue light. Um, one thing occurs to you as you return to um, return to camp after perhaps you know a, a bit of a fresher smell uh, by the waterhole is there are quite a few. Um, Body parts uh, scattered around of the uh, the unfortunate three individuals who died in the crash. Perhaps we should start to think about dealing with them somehow, um, because if you're going to stay here for any length of time, having um, rotting human corpse parts near you is probably not a good idea. Totally stole my thunder. I've been planning this first action for literally a full <laughs> week. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, so um, there's that, and there's a couple of other things as well. Um, so before we uh, get into any of the actions that anyone is 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 making, um, I would like some rolls, please, and specifically, um, and I know the the game tends to prefer you to uh, to roll skills, but we'll just stay with attributes here. Um, can everyone roll strength for me, please? I think you, if you are speaking, you are on mute, Chris. Uh, I get two sixes. Cool. I get no successes, and I think I want to take a point of damage for doing it. Oh, is that part of your critical injury? Oh, no, it's only four decks. It's just really? force. Yeah, it's just oh, force. Oh, Don't oh. worry about it. That's just if you're trying to do something. I How did you do, Sam? The holes. I, I only rolled two dice, but I managed to get a six. That's not bad. That's not bad. So, uh, two of you failed on that, right? Uh, Luria and, and Sidera. It uh, starts to occur to you, perhaps halfway back to your camp, um, that, you know, you're planning to cook and eat this this animal. Um, 
perhaps there's something you could have done with the fire before you um, drank the water straight from the watering hole. Um, because you're both feeling um, your 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 intestines are in flux, shall we say, um, and you're starting to feel a little feverish and cramped up. And could both of you um, roll uh, a D3 and take that much health damage, please? I need to work out how to roll a D3 because my dice roll does, doesn't have it. <laughs> but roll I a, a D6. A D6 and half it. Yeah, yeah. D3s don't actually exist um, because that would be... In it's not impossible, but it, it, it's awkward to roll. Um I mean, I say they don't exist. I have seen them, um, <laughs> and they're they're terrible, and they don't roll. Um, yeah, I rolled yeah. one. Take that nice. much health damage, and moreover than that, um, I'm going to say that it, it doesn't entirely reflect it in health damage. Um, we're also going to say those uh, drinks of water you just took don't count, essentially, because you are about to lose as much fluid as you took in to paint it not so grossly as it could be um and also i think it's fair to say that your movement will be mu a bit limited for a couple of days um as you react to this um on your body reacts to this unknown alien bacteria you just downed um yeah good stuff what's <laughs> what use is role playing without dysentery <laughs> I swear, Christ. we can't. We can't take much more of this. <laughs> is the, like, is this the point? You where the shit just got real. <sighs> no, band. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, I suppose now is a good time to dig a little latrine. I suppose. Probably, yeah, but probably not. We're here in Sadira doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll contribute to the to the digging as I'm <laughs> one of the people currently able to. <clears throat> sure. Um, well, then, why don't we? I think this is worth a. I think this is worth a roll. See, when this when this story started, you didn't think we'd be rolling for for digging latrines, did we? Um, and yet, yet here we are. I didn't put any skill points in that. <laughs> no, and it's right there on the sheet. Um, so, um, if Adam wants to uh, dig a latrine, then I think that's a survival role, realistically, isn't it? I think um, there's maybe on surprised to learn that it was not right there on the sheet. I don't even <laughs> think it was in the advanced player's guide. Um, <laughs> I think actually I might take one for the team, and if we if we find some digging implements, I might kind of kind of take them off Adam. <laughs> and and sure. Adam will be like, yeah, that probably makes sense. I'll dig this. <laughs> you build a fire. Okay. All yeah. right. Well, I think those are probably both survival roles. So, <laughs> um, but you know what? If you're doing them near each other while the other two are like over at one side, kind of clutching um, at their at their abdomens and making making unpleasant noises, um, I think you could assist each other if you're doing it. Um, I think that's that's kind of perfectly reasonable, right? Um, yeah. Sure. Well, having said that, if you bo do both of you have survival. Yep. Uh, no. Oh, uh, well then you cannot uh, you cannot assist in. It. But you know what, Hamza, I, I I would say that you can use force for um for digging on the latrine if you want as well. Okay. Rather than survival, so that's fine. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's two separate rolls, and let's see how they work out. Okay. That is two successes in latrine digging. In latrine digging. And not only do you build a functional latrine, you build um, a respectable functional latrine. <laughs> um, I mean, it, we are talking a, a hole in the ground, like, you know. But it's a good hole. It's a good hole. It goes, you know, yeah, deep, deep enough. enough. <laughs> deep enough for now. <laughs> uh, I was uh, less successful. I got no sixes. Okay. Um, Adam has not succeeded in putting the fire together yet, then. Would you like me to try? I've got... I don't understand why it doesn't light. I've, I've got all the sticks. Isn't this how... I 
thought a fire just kind of I don't understand. <laughs> you just put them together and then <laughs> was like, right. I mean, who starts fires nowadays? We're living in a space age. It's, it's true. True. Um, okay, well, shall we... Um, <laughs> uh, we've had a comment from John which points out something awful to the point where I, I, I might not repeat it. Oh, well, Steve's also said it's a good point, so now I have to. Um, hang on if two people are having trouble, but you only have one latrine. <laughs> let's... Let's not get bogged down in the mechanics of this. I think um, it's already Nelly. bad enough that I brought it in. Um, so let's um, let's uh, yeah, Hamza can go ahead and make a um, a survival roll um, for putting together the fire. Can also take a die from presumably Adam's assistance in this. And how how are you guys doing this? How are you clearing the area? And you know, have you got any ideas about how how that would be done? I mean, I I have nothing in survival, so um, uh, like I I'm assuming that the assistance comes from the fact that um, that Adams went and found something, some kind of foliage that looks flammable nearby. I mean, there's a there's a lot of flammable looking foliage uh, on the savannah, but it's more that um, you definitely want to place this fire in a pl in a location where you will not set fire to the landscape. Um, there is a lot of sheet metal left from the uh, from the ship, perhaps. Yeah, I think I would try and construct some that. kind of some yeah. kind of gauge, or yeah, or, or or on top of a flat piece of metal. There's also yeah. should be kind of there was a there was a reasonably big area that's already been burned, right? There is, yeah, and especially if you want to place it in there, you could, yeah. you could perhaps, you know. Right, let's find out how this goes then, shall we? Well, that's a success. There we nice. go. That's fine. Um, yep, you get a fire burning um, probably on yeah on a sheet of metal in already in the area where um, an area has been burnt out. So that's that's decent enough. Um, Luir and Sadida, uh, Sadida, Sadira, um, you are welcome to uh, kind of uh, exit stage left. Deal with your situation and then come back. Um, yeah, do you want me to role play that, or are we just moving? Um, yeah, let's do uh, let's do the conversation between the two of you while you're both at the <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> no. Um, so let's. Uh, but it, it's worth saying definitely um, that you will. Um, you're not probably neither of you are really going to leave camp in the next amount of time um, because yeah. You're you're in an unfortunate way, um, yeah. But do we do we have anything we want to do? We actually want to do a scene that's not to do with the latrine. No la scenes. Uh, yeah, I guess we could talk about who's taking watch tonight. Like me and Levere, we can stay awake and uh, and keep an eye out. Right, we know that there's stuff out there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can't save my poor intestines. Well, if, if either of you need to sleep, just uh, feel free to wake me up when, whenever you need. Yeah. As uh, as you are saying this, two things occur. First, the the blue sun seems to be starting to retreat behind the horizon. Finally, uh, and secondly, the uh, entire camp is absolutely redolent with the smell of meat starting to rot. Are we going to do something about that? I will go and start collecting body parts and putting them in a pile. I assume that we will be wanting to cook before we cremate. Um, if you're using the same fire for it, yeah. Yep, that would be a good idea. <laughs> um, but yes, I will. I will start going and collect stuff. Um, I, I presume that there is no kind of uh, PPE available. Um, Actually, no. who's got who? Who was it? That it's um, Sidera has um, Sidera. Do you have? Gloves, medical gloves. Um, I don't know if my character has gloves or not. 
If, the, um, if, if kind of medical gear is not on your sheet, then you don't have it. No. Oh, okay. Um, and that then, I mean, uh, <laughs> I've got the exo loader, but that seems that seems overkill. Yeah, and you definitely <laughs> don't need that extra strength to carry most of these parts. No, I don't want to accidentally crush anything. Um, okay, then I will start moving body parts around with my bare hands because that's the best option that I can think of right now. I mean, you can. Pro I, I'm perfectly happy for there to be some kind of spare clothing or, or cloth that survived the the wreckage and isn't in a really usable form, but could easily be torn up into kind of makeshift, um, yeah. you know, gloves for for picking up parts and then moving them. Um, so yeah, you can set about that, and someone I'm assuming is going to uh, cook. Um, someone's going to cook this beastie that's been shot. I'm not going to make people roll to cook something. You know, you've you've all cooked before, and you know, you put meat on until it stops bleeding and starts um, starts you know burning Anakin. slightly at the edges. Yeah, um, um, you do so. The creature is not particularly um, tasty. Um, as many wild, you know, herb herbivorous creatures are not, um, but it it certainly seems edible. Mm. Um, I'm assuming everyone is eating it cooked, and no one's trying for it raw. Um, I think I'm I assuming have we've learned our lessons. <laughs> yeah. Um, Do we? Cool. What are our canteens? Oh, I I think I don't have one. But what are the canteens made out of? Like, is there any? Could we boil the water in them? I, um, do that. I think, well, I, I think the canteens will be made of metal, but I think it'll be quite thin metal, right? Um, mm. So I think putting it over an open flame probably isn't advisable because it'll it'll distend the shape of it. Um, but I'm sure if you if you you could try and cobble together some kind of water, you know, metallic water container that could be, um, you know. That could be used if someone were to make an appropriate roll for that kind of thing. Um, however, I would say um, that it may be a roll best made when there's light again. Yeah. Okay. Um, because the, the the blue sun is almost gone now, and that the savannah is pitch black around you. Um, you can hear kind of bird and insect calls rise in pitch as it does so. Um, clearly, the night time is when. Some things that flutter out and abroad, uh, you know, get get very excited, um, and it's it's obviously you're out in you're out in the wild. There's there's not much cloud cover, um, so you can you can see by the stars. Um, there's no visible moons, um, but you can see a certain degree. But definitely cobbling together a utensil um, would probably be best left till the daytime. Yeah, Matt, me. Please, can I spend a moment among my stupor stargazing and specifically looking out for satellites? Yeah, go for it. Uh, I think that's just going to be a technology role, unless our observation. I don't know. What do you fancy? Um, I think it's got to be observation. Like, even if you know what you're looking for with uh, by looking for a satellite, it's. I don't think it'll massively influence it. It's just watching the sky above you until you see something moving. Really, right? Yeah, in a in a kind of that looks like it's not a, a comet or some such. Um, so I think it's going to be an observation roll. Yeah. So that is wits plus observation, which is a total of five dice. Zero successes and a lot of ones. Thank goodness yeah. there's no botch mechanics. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you don't you, you don't notice anything moving in the in the sky above. Um, so we're having the watch. Uh, we've just eaten, um, and I guess we're we're like monitoring these things, right? Food and water. Um, so let's um, notate. Um, so this let's call this day one because it's day one, uh, and you can note down that you've eaten today. You've all eaten today, um, and that um, um, Adam and Hamsa have drunk fluid. The others have, but they're losing it. So, um, yeah, let's just make that note. And uh, or also, if you can actually make a thing for shelter, and everyone's had shelter today, so okay. we're mostly good. We're mostly good. Um, so, 
Your watch is going by mostly without any incident, but I'd like um, I'd like an observation roll from both the uh, both the people who are starting out on watch, both Chris and Mike, please. Is that one success? You're on mute, by the way. Yeah, I was very happy about it. I made quite a squeaky noise. <laughs> Sorry, guys, took me a little bit of time to get used Sorry? to the system here. Oh, man, I failed with seven dice. Oof. Rough. Rough times. Um, but the we have succeeded. Like so um, let's paint a picture here, shall we? So you have um, uh, the wreckage, which I believe some part of it is being kind of propped up into a temporary shelter, which is only going to last a day or so. Uh, and I'm assuming that uh, perhaps... Adam and Hamza are sleeping within the, the lee of that shelter a little bit. Kind of maybe some clear ground has been um, moved or um, kind of uh, the, the grasses of the savannah have been bedded down uh, to provide a, a soft thing. It, that, is that kind of thing? Is that what you guys have in your head as well? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, Rhea and Sardira, I'm assuming, are sitting near the fire. Um, although our, our, our Simbaroom group on uh, every other Sunday on Free League, which I forgot to mention at the beginning, um, uh, has recently pointed out that if you're on watch, maybe you shouldn't be near the fire uh, because that's going to destroy your night vision. Um, so it's up to you where you go. Well, you tell me. Where are you guys? How are you, how are you doing this? I mean, near the latrine, probably. Yeah. But I think I will kind of be more. I'll be in the stargazing humor, so I'll be away from 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 the the fire as much as is conceivable. Absolutely. Yeah, I think probably I'd be positioned like near the the wreckage of the ship, and yeah, a little bit away from the fire, and yeah, kind of like I've got broken toes, so I don't want to be moving too much, but like just kind of turning around every so often to like look in all directions. Sure. Um, as you are doing this, uh, Luria, you hear a noise that sounds a little bit familiar, um, like a kind of slight huffing and coughing noise that you swear you heard in the underbrush near the watering hole. Um, you kind of... Um, do. You, what do you think your immediate reaction to this would be? Can I kind of echolocate it? Is it coming from a specific direction? It seems to be coming off, uh, coming from um, some... Um, way not not a tremendous distance uh, away, but not hugely close either. Say maybe um, you you'd guess maybe twenty or thirty feet away to the north of the camp. Okay, I will do my best to move back towards the core of the camp while trying to keep an ear open for this snuffleupagus thing, mm -hmm. and um, maybe try and wake. Um, did Sadira had the gun? Sadira is still awake. I, th I think both of you were awake at the same time, right? That was the idea. And you're the, you're the rifle yeah. person, aren't you, Sadira? Yeah, I've got a rifle. Yeah, like everyone so. has a has a weapon at this point, don't they? But um, um, I don't think we did. I think I'd, no, because we didn't we didn't salvage them. I, had oh, them I, had a bunch of, I think I, I got one. Right? Yeah, oh, I got okay. one. So it's just Lavia who doesn't, I think, because you well, will, um, not a gun hamster, but you've got the power fist, right? That's right. I will. Uh, attend to Sidera and raise her attention and bring her attention to the noise with uh, empathic or in emphatic hand gestures indicating we should try and keep quiet about it. Sure. Okay. Well, I'll heft my, my rifle out and like just start looking in the direction that Levy is pointing in. Mm -hmm. um, you stand there in that position, the two of you um, presumably quite tense. Um for what feels like, you know, a minute, then three, then five, you hear nothing else. Okay. Troublesome, isn't it? Okay. Uh, Levere, let's, uh, le let's, let's loop the, the camp together. Let's keep an eye out in every direction. Like, hmm. it may be just stalking us and finding out the best angle to attack. I tell you what, you let me go first and keep me just in eye range. Let me see if I can be your bait. I like that plan. Yeah. This I um, don't. <laughs> seems like a, a very um a very good plan. Um 
You know what? Let's make a let's make a little roll for it, shall we? And I think I think uh, Olivia should make the roll for it. Um, and you can, uh, if you're trying to move around the camp like, somewhat carefully, um, but also kind of trying to be bait. Um, why don't you make your choice of dexterity or infiltration? I think either of those an argument could be made. For. Okay, so um, a couple of things here. I have an impediment to movement due to my poor intestines. Mm -hmm. Two. Any roll I take involving dex, I take a point of damage. Okay, um, so you, but you could roll infiltration instead. I don't have either of those skills. But so, well, they're the same agility. So oh, they're like, both agility. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, well, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll be you infiltratedly know about. Yeah, and I think it's very, it's very honourable of you to point out that you should take a a, a, a malice for the um, for the horrible horrible gut explosion you're having so um yeah take a take a die off that it's slow movement so it, it's not really horrible but at the same time yeah not great filled with goo rolling three dices two successes get fudged internet <laughs> there we go e -sports. E -sports. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so um, hog champ yeah, you um, you circle um, you circle the camp, um, moving slowly and carefully. Um, Sidera, it, it's actually Lavia seems to definitely be able to uh, move around stealthily and quietly when he wants to, because you don't hear a single thing from him either. At some points, almost losing him um, uh, slightly ahead of you. You circle the camp once, twice, three. How many times are you doing it before you're giving up? Well, probably not, not not many because I, I do miss my latrine. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking like three times, and yeah, we're kind of keeping a very close eye on like the shelter and the fire and stuff like that as mm -hmm. well. Um, oh yeah, I'm, don't worry, I'm not going to like double <laughs> double cross you. And it's like you circle three times, and then in the morning, like like in the shelter is Hamza and Adam's leg. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what do you think this is? The Simbarum game you just ran like two days ago. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think we'll just like go, go around the wreckage like two or three times. It's not that big of a site, and no, yeah, probably just leave it there and return back to our sort of normal outlook. Sure, absolutely. Uh, and let's. Um, I mean, I could carry on making you, you know, make uh, rolls for no. Um, for no reason, but let's say that the rest of the watch uh, goes without without incident. Um, and the first thing to note about the the watch as a whole, as an entirety, is that it was dark for you would guess approximately three hours um, before um, the orange and white sun started to come up on the horizon. Um, and very soon, it is full full daylight again. Like I say, when it's not the blue sun alone. It is um, very comparable to kind of Earth's light, the mixture from the, the orange and the white suns. One of them clearly closer. The orange sun is, is the, the closer one. Um, well, maybe it's not closer. Maybe it's just incredibly larger than the white one, but it wouldn't be. I think white stars are really, <laughs> really, really big, right? Yeah, blue are biggest. Yeah. Then white, then red. Or depending. Actually, that's probably wrong. Never mind. Look, red. <laughs> All I know is you can have a red dwarf, which sounds like it should be the smallest. So it seems right. Sounds like a red supergiant, though. Anyway, look. Um... <laughs> sure. Um, at, we're being just torn apart by the uh, the astrophysics um, uh, audience out there. But um, we don't care. Let's go on with the story. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, for anyone, would anyone like to know the cycle in its fullest? Because I think you, you would have a fairly good grip on that now. Does anyone want that defined? Um, yeah. So, <laughs> the cycle in total is about um, 28 hours. Um, and essentially goes uh, like this. 21 hours analogous to, to Earth daylight. Four hours, blue light. Three hours, nighttime. That's how it is. That's how it goes. It, it probably doesn't work if you calculate it out. I was just... I wanted to come up with something cool. So it's fine. <laughs> how um, many hours of blue? Four? Uh, yeah. Yes, four hours of blue. Okay. 21, normal. 
four blue, three nighttime. Oh. So, um, I would imagine the uh, as as daylight arrives, perhaps the others wake up and um, do we like or or maybe even maybe sleep for longer? Are, you, are we planning on getting kind of full night sleep between you? Because that could be. Um, that could be quite a lot of people. Are, if you're going to split the watch in two, then quite a lot of the day is going to be like just two people, if you see what I mean. Mm. So I don't know what you want to do about that. I kind of, I, I think we'll have kind of like a little morning where we'll, we'll talk this over. And, I think um, that's a good idea. And probably oh. the sun coming up and it being quite warm would wake up the people who've only slept for, for three or four also, hours. Also, I, I, ass I assume this means I can we can knock a day off all of our mega in uh, in injury timers. Yes, you can. Yes, you absolutely can. Um, okay. Um, good morning, I think. And it's also worth pointing out, Sadira, at any point if you want to try and knock people's uh, critical injury timers in half, you can make another um, Medicurgy roll on them. Um, I think that Hamza yeah. can do that as well, right? Has uh, Hamza got Medicurgy? I do. Oh, then yeah, any, any, anyone can do it, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, no, I was just checking in case it was just like something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, the, the roll can only be made once, though, I think. Okay. Um, Do we want to... So, okay. He, I, I have my observations. Um, We worked out... Oh, I didn't write down the star we were around, or the system we were in. Help me oh. out. Abud. Was no, he was the no, bad guy. Awadi. Awadi, yes, yeah. Awadi. Awadi. Yeah. Al Algol was where we were oh, trying to get to. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um uh, I have um over the last day got the the, the uh timing for Awadi, our rotation around the Awadi main sequences. Um we have a twenty eight hour day, of which twenty one days are with the full brightness. Of the three watchmen in the sky, four hours under the light of our hydrogen friend, and then uh, three hours in darkness. The uh, wildlife is very active in darkness, and we were being watched again by that snuffly thing we encountered at the uh, at the watering hole. Do um, we think that this planet is safer in the daytime? Hmm. If we're going to need people to keep watch during the blue sun and at night time, perhaps we should consider sleeping at some point in the day, perhaps when it gets the hottest. I was thinking more about avoiding the heat than avoiding the predators. Yes, we should be careful and moving at night, but awake, uh, but uh, maybe resting during the day. I think the rest of the ecosystem is doing the same based on the sounds it was making would be my observation. This seems smart. Yeah, I like that idea. Which means, if you so wish it, you've got some more time to take a bit of rest. And then maybe we can go and do some more exploring. Oh, please excuse me a moment. The, um, great role play there, Chris. The, <laughs> um, the, um, the question of what to do with certain things also raises itself because the smell is even worse this morning. Is the fire still? The, is... You can, yeah, yeah. I'm happy for you to have kept the fire going if you want. Yeah. Okay. We we need a we need a funeral. Yeah, it's the right thing to do. Yeah, no, that's good. We need to get rid of these body parts. Is this um, a, a kind of task you're sharing together? Yeah, I think I think so. I'll come back looking very uncomfortable after my most recent trip. Okay, I think um, obviously the, the the moment to moment nature of it, we can uh, move over. Um, <laughs> like not well of Chris's um, um, illness as well as, um, but yeah, you you move the body parts um, to the fire and, and start a cremation. Um, Obviously, it's um, not a pleasant uh, task, um, nor one that particularly makes the camp smell smell very good. Um, 
and is anyone doing anything in particular while this is happening? Um, I would imagine Luria might be quite keen on. Yes, please. I'll, I'll be doing as, as much of a funerary ceremony as I can cobble together um, from whatever bits are lying around, including improvised shards of metal for symbology and whatever is mm -hmm. present. Kind of uh, praying to the icons that um, the, the poor souls find their way to whatever lies beyond uh, the third horizon. Yeah. Um, and as this happens, obviously, there is a, quite a large plume of, uh, of black smoke um, from this. Um, obvious, it will obviously be visible from a very long way away, but... It's probably fine. It's probably fine, isn't it? Probably fine. Um, so, with that in mind, like I'm happy for us to roll over, kind of like everyone getting a good sleep and, and, and trying to, you know... Uh, and waking up perhaps um, late, still under daylight, because it's 21 hours of daylight. Um, so kind of waking up later in the day and, and all being ready and fresh to go forward. Um, I would also like uh, Luria and Sadira to make another strength roll, please. <sighs> no. Fun times. So, um, I believe, um, am I right in saying that normally one recovers um, health points and um, mind points? Is that hourly or daily? It's a, it's a, mm, I think it's a mind point per hour's sleep. Uh, yeah, you, you automatically recover one mind point per hour when resting. Um, if that's the case, then then I'm perfectly happy. I, I think this, you know, it'll give you troubled uh, sleep, this condition you have, but not kind of, you can still sleep. So I think everyone can recover um, eight mind points, which I imagine brings everyone back up to full. Um, with regards to, uh, to hit points, though, um, what I'm going to say, I'm going to look at the, the natural recovery you have. Um, which for some reason is scattered around here horribly. Yeah, it is one health point per hour. Um, so I'm going to say that your health points all went back up to their maximum before you um, started um, drinking um, bacteria-infested water. Um, but I'm going to say, uh, Lawir and Sidiri, you're not recovering health points while you're ill. Um, and I'd like you to take another health point of damage, please. So what you should be on now, I think, for both of you is just two down from your maximum. Um, yeah. Okay. Does that sound all right? There we go. Okay. Um, yes. Oof. Um, and, and today, if you want to fulfill your, f your water intake for today, you will have to drink two um, loads of water. Not uh, the, the ill people, not Adam and Hamza. Hmm. Um, I guess we should start by trying to make the, the thing you mentioned to boil water in. Mm -hmm, that sounds good. Yeah. Um, and that will be... Um, that could be any number of things, I think. Um, I am happy for that to be either a survival role or a science role. Because I think just kind of, you know, the basic physics or like how to, you know, hammer something into place or whatever. Yeah, I think it's fine. So whoever wants to make that role can make it. I can uh, try a survival, have reasonable-ish mm -hmm. survival. Does anyone else have survival and want to assist the role? Yeah, yeah, I do. Go ahead. Go ahead and take an extra die for it then. Okay. And I don't think there's any malices on that. I think that's fine. Okay. I get no successes. <laughs> Do you want to pray to the icons? Uh, yes, I suppose. I can. Sure. <laughs> can just keep failing, surely. Oh, I got three successes. Ooh, oh, that is a nice. critical success. Um, so what I'm going to say for that, if you've got a critical success, is basically you work out that you find a, a supply of very um, pliable and flexible metal from the wreckage. And uh, you also uh, find kind of basically a really good sharp rock 
um, <laughs> lying on the ground that you can use to puncture through very easily. Uh, and it's such pliable metal that you can you can actually kind of like just f almost fold it um, in your in your hands to what position you want. And not only do you make uh, kind of a vessel for um, boiling water on, you also manage to rig up from this stuff a little stand for it to hang on. Um, and um, some kind of like skewers to be able to cook meat on and stuff. Basically, your cooking and boiling of water right now is pretty sorted. Nice. Um, with the gear, with the gear you've made from from this wreckage. I thank the, the traveler for my good fortune. Uh, is that that is that a traveler roll for survival? I don't know, but it is. My... Yeah, it is. It is nice. yours as well. <laughs> but it is yeah. also the the under the um, the traveler's purview. Um, yeah. Um, so what else have we got planned today, folks? What's on the agenda? I think this point, we... At this point, Sidera is going to like uh, stand up from like a pretty prone position, like with the kind of idea of, of doing some stuff and being helpful. And she's going to turn and say, we need water before suddenly collapsing to the floor and going into a sort of a seizure Ah. Um. So, but, well, I'll rush over to Sadira and uh, Sadira. What, what? What's the matter? Are you okay? Can you hear me? I guess this is going to last like a minute or two um, before before I start to come around again. Uh. If I know that Hamza has medical, do, would I know that Hamza has some medical knowledge experience? Or not, do you think? I thought Probably I... not, but Hamza will no doubt be seeing this. I yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 I will go over and see if I can figure out what's going on. Um, Medicurgy roll? Yeah, make it, give me a, a Medicurgy roll. It, I, I'd love to know what's going on as well. I've got no idea. <laughs> nah, nothing. Um, what's what's the matter with her? She, what's happening? I I don't know. Like, I guess the last thing she said was that she needed water. I mean, do we do we have some boiling now? Uh, I, I don't know where we are in the time zone. Whether we've managed to use the equipment to boil the water or whether that's yeah. I think I think that's yeah. I think you can absolutely do that. Yeah. Okay. So I will go and try and uh, I, I guess all of our canteens will be empty if we've kind of poured the stuff in. So I'll go and find mm -hmm. a canteen and fill it with water and try to sure, try to give Sidira some water. Uh, yeah, Sidira is like I guess coming coming to a little bit more at this point, just like opening her eyes and looking quite dazed and really confused about her surroundings. What just happened? I don't feel good. You collapsed. I think you need to drink oh. this. Thank you. Um, shoot, Adam, a uh, pretty e evil look at, at this point um, as I take a, a few like, shaky sips of water. And thank, thank you, Hamza. I really needed that. Are you, are you okay? What? Um, just just for the purposes, because I, I, I didn't know what Mike was doing here, and then I went and read his <laughs> character sheet, and now it's all very clear. Um, and I suspect, and, and far be for me to tell you about your characters, I suspect, would you agree, Mike, that Adam will definitely know what this is? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, in fact, uh, yes. Sidira has um, seizures quite uh, regularly, um, and they started after something happened in the past. Um, and that may illuminate things for, for, for Sam in terms of his character as well. <clears throat> well, I, I suggest that we drink all of the clean water that we have here and then we make, uh, we make an expedition back to the lake. That's a good idea, Hamza. We can take these idea. canteens. We can also take the um, the boiling pot. 
and that should that should give us enough for the day absolutely i think uh i think uh you and uh, louis in particular need to um need to drink up yeah um is the intention to just kind of head back north to the watering hole and complete this kind of thing or are we because we were talking about a little round trip where weren't we you know what mike drew us a map um of the surrounding area so john why don't we pop that map up um this lovely as i referred to it earlier xkcd slash hidden folks thing um so there we go. The crash site is in the center. Uh, recon has been carried out to the east. There is a watering hole um, to the northwest there, and then metallic structures to the northeast. Um, yeah. And obviously the stuff on the horizon to either side, the jungle and the pyramid. Yeah. Oh. So yeah. we said yesterday we were going to look at the metallic structures, maybe go back to the watering hole if we needed to, and then come back to camp. I think we should go the other way. I think we should go back to the watering hole first, then up to the metallic structures. I agree. We can see how the Weir and Sidira are feeling when we get to the watering hole, I guess. We don't have to go to the metallic structures today if we need another day of rest. Yeah, well, we, we, we thought there may be useful things there, but I think water is a priority. Yeah. yeah. You're smarter than you like, Hamza. Not really. <laughs> I'm just thirsty. <laughs> okay, so we are um, heading to the, the northwest, then heading towards the watering hole again. It is much as it was um, the last time you visited, a fairly placid expanse of water, more like a small lake than a pond with um, plenty of wildlife around it. Um, what Some bird-like creatures, I believe I describe them as kind of looking almost like flamingo analogs, um, standing on on sort of banks above that rise above the water in the center of it. Um, you reach the edge of it with no, you know, no issue whatsoever. Um, you fill up the canteens. Um, what what are you going to do with the the boiling? Are, are you carrying that full of water with you, or are you swinging back here on your way back? Um. So just in terms of capacity, we we have a canteen at each, which is. Mm -hmm which is one water unit. Yep. We have a we have the 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 pot which is must I presume contain at least four. Four. Yeah, I'd say so. I say four is good. So we could carry eight with us although albeit we'd have to boil it to make mm -hmm. it drinkable, right? Yeah, but I I think carrying the pot full of water with you to the metallic structures would be I think um, Hamza would just try to do awkward. that because it, it, okay. it just wouldn't occur to him that other people might not want to. But I, I suppose I suppose what you could do is leave the pot here uh, and come back this way. Mm -hmm. It's not that far out of your way to do so. Matt, is, am I feeling okay at this stage? Because that's a long way to walk with with this work. You're, you're not going to enjoy this walk, but you can make it. Okay, I will dig deep. But I'm, I'm not going to tell you exactly what effects it may or may not have before you do it. But it's up to you. You don't have to come on this journey. You can you can leave it for the others, you know? Yeah, I think that Sidira doesn't want to go to the metallic structures. And I, just maybe stay I, by the watering hole. I've got... Well, I think I, I will go back to the camp. I think that makes right. sense. Right, um, sure. But yeah, like going like the additional few kilometers to the, to the metallic structures and back, just like broken toes, like mm -hmm. bad, bad uh, stomach. Yeah, that just doesn't make any sense. Like, yeah, I, she, she, she I, understands I agree. that she needs to rest. So, sure. I think we can carry the water back to camp and set up this the, the still. And uh, yeah, that seems a if, that seems a good idea. Then, so uh, perhaps um, I mean, I imagine Hamza doesn't want to drink the water in his canteen without it being boiled. Um, Adam doesn't need a can have a canteen or need a canteen because he's got the is it called a the thermostatic armor. Thermostatic suit, yeah. It's 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 a still suit. It's a still suit from June, um, is what he has. Um, so I will probably end up ac accidentally calling it a still suit a lot. Um, but yeah, um, so is the idea you all go to the watering hole together 
and uh, Luir and Sadira carry the canteens, the full canteens, and the um, um, the the pot full of water back to the uh, back to the camp. While Hamza and Adam go on and find out what these metallic structures are, is that does that sound right? Is that what we're doing? I consent to this because it splits the heavy hitters between the two subgroups. Um, <laughs> yeah, Hamza would be totally happy to do that. That's just that's kind of that's. I, I think he's feeling up to the trip, and uh, that's less injured, sick people to bring with him. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Okay then, um, let's do that. Uh, in which case, I we're getting our first um, cam removal of the series. How exciting! Um, <laughs> so let's take away these two. Ooh, oh, good lord, no. Um, <laughs> So, um, so guys, you have headed to the watering hole, and now you're splitting off and you're going to the northeast. And you'd speculated that that was about a four-kilometer walk away, which obviously, under normal circumstances, isn't much of a walk at all. And it's not terribly here. You're both um, recovering to a certain degree, and at the very least, you don't have dysentery to deal with. Um, but let's say it still takes, you know, longer than it normally would. You're both still um, injured to a certain degree, and it's very warm, and you're probably wanting to be quite cautious. So I'm saying that's probably about an hour's walk away. What do you reckon? Do you think that sounds about right for walking carefully and slowly? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we'd be in a rush. No, the sun, absolutely not. We're still in, like, the bright sunlight as well, aren't we? Oh, yeah, yeah. You've got hours and hours and hours left of that. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and um, we're... Yeah, we do, we have no water with us, so I don't think we're going to be wanting to really exert ourselves, right? If we can help. Absolutely, help. that's that's a very good point indeed. Um, so, as you um, make your way through the savanna, you know the the landscape doesn't change to any degree. As I say, like traveling this far north, you know nothing appears on the horizon to the north. There's the occasional solitary tree or little clumps of trees uh, that you can see around you, but it's just rolling grassland as, as as far as you can see. Occasionally, you move nearby some of those her like herbivore creatures that uh, one of whom which you shot, and they scatter off into the brush with kind of some of their some of their young, but nothing really occurs. As you um, start to walk further to the northeast, however, you can see um, approaching, you see some uh, metallic objects like rising out of the grass. And as you get closer, it becomes more and more uh, apparent that the uh, what you're seeing in front of you is a starship. Moreover, a crashed, wrecked starship. Oh, this is bad. Um, it looks to be um, actually quite a similar ship to the Shining Light uh, that you came here on. It's another Kamruk class scavenging ship. Uh, scavenging, scavenging ship. Um, as you get closer, you can see it seems to carry no markings, but. Um, I mean, lots of ships don't, or the parts of it that carried markings might have been destroyed. You really, there's no conclusions to be drawn from that. It looks like it perhaps survived impact a little bit better than the Shining Light did. Um, it looks like it's broken up into maybe two parts, and most of the parts, you know, are still moderately starship shaped. Um, but still, it's it's wrecked. You know, um, yeah. What are the chances? of two ships coming down in the same place within four kilometers on a huge planet yeah. in, in, in the same place like yeah. <laughs> astrologically speaking oh yeah <laughs> i'd i'd have to say impossible and if i wasn't looking at it with my own eyes this is the work of the icons or something this is a trap and you know that you and I are going to go and see what we can get. We're doing that, aren't we? We've come all this way. I think we have to at least see. Maybe there's survivors. Maybe there's not. Maybe there's something useful. Okay. I think we're going to... I'll pull out my Vulcan carbine to be safe-ish. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, 
So, um, as you approach it, um, nothing, you know, nothing horrible happens. Nothing uh, happens at all. Uh, kind of some uh, some small bird-like creatures that were scampering over the top of it flit off as you uh, as you approach. Um, you can see that one the one half of it, the front half, is completely wrecked and looks like it's been completely burned out inside as well. The back half is a little more intact. You can see where there it looks like maybe the galley room is is accessible and there might be some things scattered around there. You can also see um, that some kind of rent in the hull it has led into what looks like a similar cryo chamber to yours, um, just underneath. And uh, like as you move around the side, you can kind of look over and, and see the the shapes. Um, some of the, the the coffins are still in there. Can I get any sense of how long this ship might have been here? I I have that <laughs> written down as a possible role to be made, Samuel. Um, so you can make either an observation or a technology role, please. Uh, I think I don't have. To, I definitely don't have technology. Observation. I have some. I will roll that. I have. Um, I have technology as well. Can I? Can I? Assist? You can help. Yeah, yeah. You can help. So take an extra an extra die for that. Um, yeah. Oh well. Although actually. Uh, do you have observation, Stephen? Uh, no, I have technology. Because you could help him with a technology roll, but he can't roll technology because oh, okay, it's right. an advanced <laughs> skill. So, um, yeah, <laughs> so it's going to be an observation roll, Sam. Okay, without the extra die. I got one success. Okay, um, there is some weathering on this hull, um, but it it doesn't look. Honestly, it you would think that this ship has crashed in sometime in the last cycle, um, and a cycle in the Third Horizon is analogous to a year. Okay, it looks quite recent, which just makes it even more 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 impossible than it seemed before. There is. There is a mystery. There are three things here. There is a mystery. There are... There is the possibility of crew. There is the possibility of salvage. Shall we check the cryo chamber first? Yes. At least then we'll... I think if we can find out if everyone is dead or alive, that the most immediate concern it's what we would do if there were a distress call in space okay yeah that makes sense okay. i don't know whether i'm hoping for people to be alive or dead so you you approach the the, the rent in the, the side of the ship that uh leads to the cryo chamber and the cryo chamber itself as well obviously it's not just part of the hull it's a separate module within the ship and as you kind of duck you have to kind of duck down to enter into this um, partially illuminated kind of light from outside is, is thrown in, uh, but it just takes a moment to blink and let your eyes are just before you can see. It's like being in a, you know, a crawl space under a house with a, a, a window just in the side. Like it is dark and musty, but you, after a few seconds, it, you can find some visibility in there. Um, and um, I'd like you both um, to give me an observation roll, please. One success. Okay. No successes. Um, so, Hamza, you notice um, that basically the side of the the, the the hull seems to have bent inwards during the crash. Um, the actual side of the module, though, which is sort of light plastic and metal sheeting that frames the module, looks like perhaps um, another matter. Um, it looks to you like it's been torn through. perhaps by an animal of some kind. I don't think there are survivors. Let's now that you are in here as well, you can see that all the cryo all the coffins, you can't see in them without getting a bit closer, but all the coffins seem to be open. So if they're open, people have either left or they're still in there dead. Presumably. I am going to lie and just tell Adam that they're all empty 
and that we should um, we should salvage what we can and um, make it fast. Does that, does that mean the people have escaped? They either they either they 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 climbed out and they've gone somewhere else, or whatever remains have been picked off by the wildlife. There's nothing to bury. Okay. Well, at least that's something. I guess we'll see if we see any signs of, uh, you know, temporary encampments when we salvage the the ship. <clears throat> the ship, the galley. There might be something there. So am I right in saying that uh, neither of you are kind of getting close enough to the coffins to kind of take a closer look and just Correct. getting out of there? Hamza doesn't want to stay around long enough to have to bury people if he finds Adam. people. <laughs> 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 sure. Um, absolutely. Um, well, then, yeah, the, the galley's a bit more difficult to get into. Um, the back of the ship is kind of on a tilt, and it leaves you having to kind of scramble up this sort of 40-degree angle and maybe hold, try and hold on to some of the fixtures that are still remaining enough to have a look around. Um, but look around, you can. Um, can you both give me, and oh, so many of these, an observation roll, please? Yep. And for every success you get, you can find something. I got two. Got one. All right. Um, are you looking for any specific kind of thing, or do you want me to just to hand stuff to you? Um, um, I think probably food would be top priority for Gabby. Yeah, I think I'd like to look for a, a, equipment of some sort, whether we have other kind of uh, cooking pots or things that we, you know, could be used in a survival kind of situation. Sure. Um, well, then, in that case, um, do you want to, do you want to try for food for both of yours, Sam, or, or do you want a food and a something else? What do you want? I'll take one food and one uh, one dip. Please. One lucky dip. Uh, okay. Um, in that case, Sam, you find one food ration. Um, that's good for one person for one day. Uh, I would like to rem remind you, by the way, I think um, normally I have some rules about how many rations constitute a shot animal, um, but I kind of glossed over them because I, I felt sorry for you guys. So I let you all eat from that animal yesterday, but um, there's going to be some rules around that. So we're starting afresh today. And of course, it's worth noting you have no more food now. So um, this food ration probably going to come in handy. Um, something uh, else that you find um, well, you know what? You you said you were looking for some uh, equipment that might help you, Hamza, and, add, and there's no real point in finding one of these, so both of you find a personal communicator. Mm. Nice. Very useful. Uh, the range on it is, uh, without looking it up in the book, like, you could definitely communicate between here and the camp. Nice. That's... Uh... Probably important. <laughs> and then I would like you to both roll infiltration. Ooh. Okay. That's, yeah, that's definitely nothing. Sure. <laughs> I got one success. Okay. Um, as you're kind of finding these, you, you both find the personal communicators around the same time and are kind of maybe glancing at each other to kind of like, you know, these are useful if there's two of them sort of thing. <laughs> uh, as you do so, there is a slight um, creaking noise from above. Um, Adam, you register it quickly enough to kind of look up and uh, jump back as a, a sort of stanchion a beam holding uh, part of the roof up starts collapsing on the pair of you. Um, Hamza, um, now I don't want to, you know, how do you think you'll ad address this? Um, I want to say like, you know, a dexterity roll is probably, probably a good one for trying to get out of the way. Yeah. Uh, for, for all his size, Hamza is fairly dexterous, although he does have those broken ribs. Yeah. So... Is, that, is that a health point damage if you, if you do a dex? dex uh, it's not a, no, it's just minus two to the roll. 
Minus two to the roll, okay. Uh, um, well, give me that dexterity roll then, please. Okay, because I think the, the instinct will be just to kind of jump out of the way. Sure. And fail to do so. Okay. Pray. Um, you could, uh, yeah, you could pray. I think I might, because that sounds like something large sure. and heavy and structural. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so this will be a prayer to the dancer. Okay. Uh, it failed. Ah. But enjoy your darkness point. The the dancer is um the dancer is not holding you closer, regardless of their size. Um that's an uh, that's awful. Terrible. Uh, I really can see bad. people I can see people shaking their heads on the cams <laughs> below. Um ah. terrible, terrible. I immediately, immediately regret nothing. I think that's so, a minus one darkness point, really. <laughs> Surely increase. Uh, I should get a darkness <laughs> point every time I make a terrible joke. Um, so uh, the stanchion comes down, and you you start to dive out of the way. Uh, but before you do so, it, it's something holding it above snaps. One end of it tilts, and it bashes your shoulder extremely hard, and sends you kind of tumbling to the ground and scrambling and rolling forwards. Um, and gives you, you know, it's basically wrenched your shoulder out of place. Um, take four health points of damage, please. Okay. And yeah, Hamza goes tumbling, probably sliding down and, and kind of out of the, the ship, and you can uh, you can hear the creaks and groans. The entire roof of it, of the galley, isn't collapsing, but like enough chunks of it are coming down and tilting and, and, and rolling that you, you probably don't want to step foot in there again until it's, at least until it's settled, if at all. It seems to be quite, um, yeah, quite unstable. Um, Adam, I'm happy for you to have just got out of there in the yeah. meantime, in in a safer fashion. I, I think I would dash over to Hamza and try and help him up as, you know, <laughs> offer a hand. You, you're right. That hit you pretty hard. Yep. Yeah, it did. Uh, seems like the ship is maybe not very stable anymore. Uh, maybe that means it's been here longer. I don't know. I don't know. We... I guess we found some good stuff. We can check the cockpit if you want to. It looked all burnt out. I think I want to go back to camp and put my arm back in. Yeah, that seems a bit risky. <laughs> There's only two yeah. of us. In. I think we should head back as well. That sounds reasonable to me. You can take a look at the the kind of front part of the ship as you go past. Indeed, it is. It looks all burnt out. It looks like um, uh, incredibly hot flame ran all through it, presumably during the crash. Um, and it looks like, yeah, there's there's nothing of any real value there. Um, so, as you are traveling, uh, are you traveling straight back or are you traveling kind of to the watering hole first, kind of? We don't I can't have anything. why you would particularly, but we yeah. don't have anything to put water in, right? Like it was all taken back to the camp. Yeah. So I suppose we would just head in a straight line. Unless yeah. you wanted to hunt, I suppose. It seems mm. to be quite a good place for hunting. Uh, near this crash site. On the, no, the watering hole. Oh, the watering hole. I think uh, since Hamza's arm is injured, I think I'd be concerned about us getting stuff back if we did shoot anything. Sure. Um, so maybe yeah. head back first and then head out again if the others haven't managed to hunt anything. Or yeah, maybe, sure. Maybe I'll get some rest and then <laughs> yeah, and then, and then yeah. think about dragging animal corpses around. Sure, absolutely. Um, so, in that, uh, in the spirit of that, let's uh, let's do a bit of a swap here. Let's um, bring these guys on and bring those guys off. Uh, hi. So, um, yeah, you gathered a load of water. You brought it back to camp. Have presumably boiled it. I'm assuming. Yeah. Yep. Um, and with that in mind, um, I think. Yeah, I think there's no reason that everyone can't have double rations of water. Basically, every time a trip like that is taken to the water hole, watering hole, it produces double the water you need per day. So I think at the moment, you guys don't have to worry about kind of escalating symptoms from um, from the dysentery due to due to water loss, right? So 
Um, sure. I think I think it'd be good. I think it'd be good. Uh, so I like I think Sidera like after having some water and maybe a bit of a rest wants to like think about the the shelter and the structure. So mm -hmm. uh, she it started yeah. to it started to fall apart. Like another lean to needs to be built if you want to have more shelter today. Sure. So I'm gonna shout Levere and just throw my carbine over to him without too much forewarning. <laughs> okay. He you, you know, juggles it in his hands, it drops, goes off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I do drop oh. it, but I, I pick it up and dust it off and go, oh, I'm sorry. Funeral. <laughs> you, 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 know, you know how to use that, right? Um, not effectively. <sighs> a firearm is, firearms is an on-train skill, Matt, isn't it? It is. Ranged combat is a general skill. Yeah. So you can, you can roll agility for it. And if you don't have it, it hurt me. yeah, no, no, I can, I can point the end, fire, angry bullet. It is something like that. Well, just hold it and use it if you have to, but don't use it if you don't have to. I'm going to create oh, a, a structure choice. for us. Um, so this will be a survival roll, please. Uh, yeah, which is weird. So six and dice. You said, yeah, you need one success for just a daily shelter and a critical for a shelter, that you, a permanent shelter that you never have to roll for again. One success. Okay. Um, so you have a shelter you can use for the day again. Um, so um, on day two, I think it's safe to say... Uh, yeah, we're on day two, and water for everyone is fine. Shelter for everyone is fine. Food is now the uh, the question mark because there's just one food ration available, and Sam has that. Um, but yeah, is there anything else you're particularly doing at camp? Or are you happy to wait for the uh, the uh, the little expedition to come back? I think I'll be um, I'll be kind of patrolling maybe a little bit. I, I will give the gun back, but I'm going to be kind of. Keeping a close eye on 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 the vegetation and the sure. lives on the flora and fauna. Um, I would I would say, in incidentally, um, Sidera, like that recon probe you have, um, you could certainly use it to do a bit more scouting. Kind of um, obviously, you seem to have picked up on some things to the north here, but you know, there are other directions. Yeah, I could, um, and I will. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I believe no, I'm, just, I, I'm, I'm a bit conscious about like it's got two hours of charge. I've used it a couple of times already, probably for like mm -hmm. what five minutes of a go, maybe ten yeah. minutes at a time, something like that. But yeah, okay, I'll, I'll send it up and maybe yeah, skirt, like look around the area to the south. Sure. Well, well, let's let's roll this down. Let's say every every roll on this thing takes ten minutes off the charge, right? So it's got tw sure. it's now got eleven charges left. Let let let's call it that. Yeah. Um, and if you have to use it for a protracted amount of time for whatever reason, we'll see how many of those charges we count. Um, okay. But if you're taking a, a general look, um, yeah, it's a, so that's an observation roll, right? And I think you get uh, is it three, three dice, three dice bonus to it for the for the. Um, and I'll say for each of these ten minutes, you have to send in a direction. So uh, which direction are we taking? Yeah, so I think like I we kind of know what's to the north, so I'll head like and and also south. kind of to the east, I think, because you walked that way, right? And you didn't yeah, find yeah. anything there. So, so yeah, if you want to look for the south, go for it. Yeah, let's let's just send it out to the south. Can I um can I be nosy and kind of poke over my poke my head over over the shoulder as this is going on and assist the role because I have if, observation. If you have observation, you absolutely can. So take another die, Mike. This is this is eleven dice. No successes. <laughs> one success. <laughs> <laughs> Still one success, right? Um, so <laughs> let's. Um, yeah, you you see something. It's, it's actually looks like similar metallic structures um, to the ones you noticed to the northeast, um, and they look to be to the uh to the south almost directly to the south of the camp um and you'd estimate it to be about one and a half kilometers so not that far okay well i'll i'll 
you know, Levere's looking over my shoulder, I'll point that out and explain what I think that is. And yeah. That's not far. We could go take a look. Uh, yeah. How, how, what like time of, or like how many hours of daylight, proper daylight, do I think that we have left at this point, Matt? Uh, well, let's think. Um, so it's there's 21 in total, right? You had yeah. another sleep after the sun came up. Everyone had another sleep after the sun came up. And that that was in a group of two as well. So let's say that took a total of eight hours. And let's say so far this has taken two hours. So about 11 hours. Okay. Well, we could, but maybe we should wait for Hamza and Adam because if they come back and we're not here, they will yeah get pretty concerned. Okay. We will all go together to uh, the mystery metal ruins. On the other hand, it's not too far away. We've it's had water. We've had yeah, a bit of a rest. Water. To do with a bite to eat, though. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's head out. Okay. So um, the walk that you take directly to the south it doesn't you know it, it's just a bit further than the uh, the watering hole really so it, it's you know it's it's slightly uncomfortable for you to do so given the the condition you're in but certainly not that rough you just end up feeling a, a bit more tired or, and worn out um as you approach uh, the structures you know you, you you see them after only a short amount of walking um you think you didn't see them properly from uh, the campsite to begin with because there's actually kind of a small copse of trees um just uh, obscuring your view of uh, the metallic structure and as you round them and get a good look at it you see what appears to be um a um, crashed starship. Oh my goodness. It is uh, quite different from yours. It is an, an Azuk class gunship, uh, and the hull is clearly still marked with the star of the Zenithian hegemony. Um, the uh, uh, faction of um, the Zenithian people that has kind of claimed uh, leadership and ownership of a lot of kind of land and political institutions around the third horizon um yeah it is as you approach it you think oh it almost looks relatively intact and then you kind of round to one side of it and it's one side is entirely given away and is crumpled you know crumpled and trashed in in the ground um it's still it essentially looks like you know basically the frame is mostly still there and it looks like some of the rooms and modules might be just kind of crumpled and wrecked inside but maybe you could get inside and and, and poke around it if you wanted and what kind of um uh can, can i make an estimate on how long it's been grounded for um you can why don't you give me um you know what oh, well, you can give me either a observation or a technology roll. Do not have technology, alas, but I will take that observation, which is five dice. Wits plus one, five. One success. Um, you're not real. You couldn't really pin it down, but a number of cycles. So it's been a while. Yeah, it has been a while. The the like the Zenithian hegemony logo on the side is faded in the sun um, and. Uh, some of the metal kind of shows scoring from from maybe storms or uh, wind or some such. Any sign of like any sign of kind of encampment has it been kind of? You can't see any sign of human life. Oh my dear! Oh my beautiful creature! Gunship. Whoever brought this in didn't do quite as good a job as I did. Poor creature. Hey, that's true. Well, still, keep your wits about you. We don't know what's in there. I think we should... Go either. inside? No, I'm actually suggesting maybe the opposite. I think discretion might be the better part of scavenging, and maybe we can come back here with everyone. I'm just a little bit concerned that neither of us are in the best of shape. I don't particularly want to go scrumping around a half-broken gunship. Levere, I've not walked all of this way with a broken toes to not investigate whatever this is. Like, ah, we've come all this way. Haste will get you 
in situations like this, no benefit. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Let me just have a little poke around inside. I won't be long. We've got the weapon. It's fine. Okay. I'll see if I can find anything else on, on the outside. It's a bit more of a close inspection. So, um, Sadira, if you're poking around inside, there isn't a huge amount of room to maneuver inside. Um, you very quickly stumble across the uh, the ship's cryo chamber, where it's very apparent that fire has roared through this. Um, what you can see a gap in the side of one cryo coffin, and a, a simple glance at kind of uh, charcoal uh, coated bones tells you that you very much doubt anyone on this ship survived impact. Um, are you taking a bit of a scavenge roll? Uh, yeah. And yeah. What, what, what do we normally use for that? Do we normally do observation, observation, as we do for, I'd say, 90% of our rolls so far. <laughs> Two sixes. Oh, fantastic. What kinds of things are you looking for? Uh, yeah, food and uh, one item that's GM's choice. Oh, GM's <laughs> choice. Um, you do find a food ration. Um, you also find... Hmm. You find... Let's do something that we haven't had so far. You find um, a kind of tilted over half-wrecked locker. And inside it is a, an adaptable fit set of light armor. Oh. Nice. Nice. Um, it's kind of uh, modular, so you know it can be fitted to anyone. You just remove strips of it, and, and it. Um, sure. Yeah. Well, I will. I will drag that out, and um, yeah, Levere's probably got some uh, like pretty obvious signs of like injury from his uh, yeah from from his uh, crash landing. So maybe I'll uh, call him over and start to. Yeah, fit it on him, roughly. Ooh, this is uh, a kind gesture. Yeah, well, just until we get back. I'll take that light armor. What does I have to read up on what that actually does? Yeah, just just note down light armor for now, and we'll um, we'll we'll yeah. cover it later. Um, do, do uh, with a with a closer kind of circuit while while Sadira was was inside. Did I find anything interesting on the exterior of the craft? No, the nothing. Nothing that you wouldn't expect. There's you know sc now faded scorching, um, uh, the hegemony logos and, and weathering. There, there, there's nothing really of any of any huge significance. Well, time. And uh, nature have taken whatever was useful to be found on the outside of this poor stricken creature. Um, yeah, speaking of nature, I'll be back in five minutes. Fairly well. Ah, I think I will whistle a jaunty tune. And actually, maybe I'll go poking around on, on, on the inside as well while uh, Sadira is. Sure. Now that it's yielded armor-shaped fruit. Yeah. Um, so why don't you give me an observation roll, please? Delicious. Uh, once again, that's five dice. Um, I already have, given we have two sessions as one, I have the prayer to the... Um, oh, my goodness. Why do I yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Every two of our streams is considered one session for XP yeah. and other purposes. So, yeah, for praying to the gods, you've prepared your prayer to... To the gambler. To the Who gambler. Is... So, yeah, so if you push this roll, you get extra dice. Yeah, so I might do that. But yeah. let's see what happens. Um, 5D, 6. Ooh, one success. Preparing my dark point pen. I think I will do that, and I basically roll the same pool again, yeah? Have I spent darkness points yet? Did I spend darkness points to trash someone's gear? I don't think so, unless you did, didn't tell us. I don't think I did. I don't think I did, because basically some of you had gear in the last session that if you got it from the wreckage, I was just going to spend darkness points to wreck it because it would oh. ruin the story. 
like one of you has like a system communicator and stuff like that that would be like yeah that's we don't game over that. yeah, <laughs> yeah so. so i'll i'll reroll the uh, whole pool and i get an additional success so two in total okay and what kind of thing would you like to look for um i think i will <laughs> On originally request a food and a GM's choice. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You find a food ration, um, and um, oh, let's go for something different yet again, shall we? Um, you find a transactor. Um, oh. That is essentially a personal credit um, stick or card. Um, you really are in no position with and with no technology to check what's on it. Um, and obviously, depending on your character's personal morals, you know, because it has got a tag identifier, these kind of things, like, r realistically, it, it, it's very easy to just steal what's on it um, if you know the right people or, or pay for that service. Uh, but equally also, it, you know, it will have some kind of identifier on it, probably, unless that person didn't want to be identified. Um, and therefore, like, if you wanted to return it in some way, um, then you could, although presumably the person who it was is now dead. Um, yeah, but either way, you find a transactor, and without you know the appropriate equipment, um, you won't be able to find out what's on it until you're full of wry wit. When I notice Sadira kind of returning from her excursion, I will be like, Behold, we're rich, we, we're all saved. Uh... You're on mute, <laughs> you're you're on on mute, mute. by the mic. So Sadir is going to, yeah, pretty wryly reply, yeah, and you were the one who didn't want to look in here. Well, I will be, uh, I will be um, shamed in my beautiful luxury resort when we make it away from this place. Hmm. Speaking of making it away, I'm, I'm assuming we're going to retreat uh, back to the camp now. Uh, and for reasons of expediency, um, why don't we have everyone return together? Um, so let's bring everyone back on. Lovely stuff. Oh, John. John's doing it at the same time I'm doing it. <laughs> like a filthy stream manager. Um, so <laughs> let's say everyone returns at roughly the same time. I'd say like Hamza and, and Adam's trip still takes longer, especially now that Hamza's got that injured shoulder in place. So I think Sadira and Luria are still at, are back at camp by the time you um, you arrive. Um, yeah. Um, good hunting. Oh, Hamza, are you okay? There, there was an accident. I'll be fine. Was it... Were you attacked or... We found... A spaceship. Oh, <laughs> so did we. Um, Another one. Sadira sent her her um, friend aloft, and we found one. You see that there's a copse of trees just in sight there. It's actually right behind that. I already suspected that two ships so close together was too much to be coincidence. Astronomically unlikely, and this, this one. Crap. This one was a Zenithian cutter as well. Gunship. Been here a good number of cycles, I'd say. What was I, yours? Uh, it was it was much like ours. It was a scavenger ship. Oh. But I, I don't think it had been here that, that long. Probably within the last cycle, I, I would guess. So perhaps this pyramid is a siren. Calling ships out from the portals and to their doom. Um, I think something here is pulling ships in. That begs the question, maybe there are others like us who survived. For better, but probably knowing our luck so far, for worse. All the cryopods in the ship we found were, were empty. I didn't check the cryopods. Sadira, did you? Yeah, they were... The whole chamber was burnt out. Oof, I can't God, imagine anyone goodness. survived. We found some communicators. Oh! That's, That's useful. useful. Uh, we, delightful. We found, we found food. 
we found a data transactor and I, uh, well you can see what Levy is wearing I don't know what <laughs> use it is on me but it's certainly keeping all my bits in the right order I suppose uh, seems good so, oh some food whoops um how are we set for dinner um, I believe you now have three food rations in total. So if you all want to eat today, more food will have to be found. I think I can I can render this up to, to the group. I'm still not feeling 100% myself. I'll give the little food pack over to, I don't know, I think Hamza looks like could do with some yum-yums. Are you sure? Yeah, I'll be okay. All my insides just finished coming out. I think I can I can do without a dinner. It's um, it's very much appreciated. There is definitely some, definitely plenty of daylight left. If um, I mean, you, you you could also do it under the under the blue light as well. But um, there's definitely daylight left if anyone wants to try hunting at the watering hole again or, or elsewhere. We need to think about making our way towards the uh, pyramid we cannot make this into some permanent settlement it's charming Agreed. though your company is i am more nervous about the pyramid now that i know what's out here on the savannah but that still seems like a more appealing option than disappearing into the forest if we're making that journey to the pyramid we've we've got to be in a better state than we are now how many how many wrecks are out here? Well, at least How three. But if there are three, then there may as well be 103. Perhaps we could find more gear. Something that can help us make the journey. Perhaps at least they provide some form of shelter. They're all so torn up as well. I was hoping maybe we could find one that was still had enough power to at least give me a decent computer. Yeah, or communicator. That could also be good re a good reason to stay away from the wrecks. If they're attracting us, who and what else are they attracting? Yes, the other survivors may have more violent agendas. We don't know. Maybe there have been people stranded here for tens of years. Maybe there is no way off. I mean, I, I know this planet. And, and no, I don't, don't know this planet. I know this system it is inhabited. There, there must be someone will find this place eventually i think somebody already knows about this place why do beat ships and not salvage them is it possible that it's just a a natural phenomenon is this could this just be where ships end up making a, a common mistake on the calculations i don't really know how these things work do you, does it no. have to be a person that there's no like mistake on the calculations it feels more like perhaps interference i don't know the calculations would have brought us right to our destination there was no problem okay. i think we need to plan to camp in a different place every day i think we need to make and find and be prepared to carry what we need to do that and i think we need to go east maybe not today maybe not tomorrow we don't know if there's fresh water to the east. It seems madness to move further away from the water. But we don't I kind of agree with you. If we can we find water towards the east, then it makes sense to move that direction. We don't know what's interested in these wrecks and, and, how, soon, and how soon whatever it is will come. And we did put up a glorious pillar of uh, pillar of dust with the uh, funerary rites for our fallen friends if i, I felt we could i would pick a direction and start walking now i would rather not sleep here well we do have a nice uh refreshed shelter thanks to sadira maybe um maybe we try our luck this evening and, and maybe we can camp near one of the uh, older wrecks tomorrow Maybe we can just inchworm our way towards the pyramid. I mean, if there is one watering hole, perhaps there'll be another. Could be. I think we either need to try and find some watering holes on the way to the pyramid, or 
we're going to have to make the journey in one big go. Um, and, f yeah. and find some kind of larger container we can move. Mm. Although that's mm. another day of perhaps another day of rest, we'll see um, some of our worse maladies addressed as well. Maybe we push for one last night in the belly of our uh, in the belly of the shining light. Yeah, and let's move tomorrow. We might not be able to move far, but let's move tomorrow. Okay. I've I, the I I am very unsettled by these wrecks, and that we're mm. one of them. But who? But still, the logic of it, who would drag ships to their doom and not scavenge them? Who would crater ships into... Uh, do you, there's, there's no profit here. This may be interference, but perhaps it is... The source is more esoteric than simply some piracy. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not my place to speculate. Hmm. I just want to live. And I don't think we do that by staying around this wreck for too long. Yes, agreed. One last okay. night for old time's sake, because goodness me, I have already walked too far today. I think the only thing I would say is if we're worried about staying at the wreck, sure, if because something might come for us here, surely that thing is aware of possibly coming from the pyramid. That seems the most likely source of whatever is doing or causing this and that's the way we're going to walk anyway I, I don't know I don't know if it's connected to the pyramid I don't I don't know if it's a who or a what or a something ancient and automated or a I don't maybe know it's, it maybe it is a friend the icons will of course sort the facts from the speculation in due time i didn't i didn't want to say adam back at the wreck that we found but something had torn its way in to the cryopod chamber after the crash an enthusiastic friend perhaps one night one night, yes. One night. Agreed. Okay. So it sounds like the plan is one night. Um, one more night at this site, and then move. Did we did we come to a conclusion of um, a, just general movement towards the pyramid, or? I I, I think what I will um, vote quite heavily in favour of kind of wreck hopping our way towards the thing and trying to scout out to sure. the area i mean if if there's only one source of water in this plane then all bets are kind of off at least until we're in better shape yeah i think i think find find the landmark send the drone up find the next landmark and, and head in a kind of generally east direction yeah absolutely um so with that in mind uh, you do have a few hours left of um of full daylight and uh, the hours of, of blue light as well. Um, and you are, as I said, you are down one food ration. Is anyone interested in hunting? Levere, I know you feel pretty rough, as do I, but we've got to eat to keep up our strength, and that will aid our recovery. Oh, I sure, I will you. have a um, falafel salad, please. <laughs> If somebody cares to lend me a rifle, I'm happy to go. I don't think I can bring us back dinner with the power glove. Just run around the water and hold <laughs> swinging. Punch it, yeah. <laughs> I, can, uh, I can go with you. I have, I have a rifle that I can shoot possibly well. If we are expecting that the uh, pyramid dwellers are unfriendly, we should be as careful with our ammunition as we are with our food and water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If there's a party going out and a party staying, then a rifle goes out and a rifle stays. And yeah. a communicator as well! 
Praise be the icons. Thank you, the messenger. So it sounds like uh, Sadir and Lavira are uh, staying where they are, and uh, Adam and Hamza are proceeding onwards to the watering hole to do some hunting, both with a personal communicator and both can communicate with each other. Um, so here's how the hunting rolls work. We just rolled ranged combat last time because I was like, there's loads of animals around there, and they're not really paying you much attention, so you just shoot them. However, um, you have two choices here about how you want uh, to carry out a hunt now that the animals around here are a little bit more wary of you. You can either roll just survival. You can just make a survival roll. Or, um, I don't know if people don't have survival or they don't want to roll that for whatever reason, um, the other option is two linked rolls, which is first making an infiltration roll, and then if that's successful, a ranged combat roll. Um, to sneak up and then just, you know, gun an animal down sort of thing. But otherwise, it's a survival role. Um, Adam, you were the one with the gun. What do you want to do? Uh, so, I, I think for me, the survival is just better. So, sure. survival. <laughs> then make that roll for me. Okay. Got no successes. Oh my god! I, I rolled Time the to push. Time to yeah. push. Yeah, I think so. We need food. God, you ha you have infinite darkness points already. What do what does one more? Sure. Matter? What does one more matter? I got one success on the reroll. Um, okay, so um, yeah, you shoot. Uh, it, it's a relatively smaller creature. Um, the size? No, let's not go down that uh, <laughs> that road. You know, it's it's a smaller creature. Maybe maybe the you know. Um, I have to though, don't I? I have to actually. So we I used the comparison last time. I well, I was pushed into last time using the comparison of two lambs strapped together. Um, <laughs> this uh, this is more like a single lamb in size, right? It's enough for one food ration once it's been um, kind of you know um, stripped down and uh, and made ready for cooking. Um, but yeah, that's all you need today, right? So, one lamb strapped together. One lamb <laughs> strapped together, um, and then return to the camp and quickly strapped apart. Um, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Cool. I presume I was just kind of standing around trying to look useful while Adam was. <laughs> Sure, unless you've got anything, you know, you've got the power glove, you could try running and punching a lamb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, the creature the creature that you've killed, I think I kind of semi-described them last time, but the, the, it's kind of, you know, it, it's a younger version of what you killed last time. It's an odd sort of um, slightly snuffling creature with uh, a sort of slightly trunk-like proboscis and a whitish grey um, skin. Um and um, yeah, it also has six legs, uh, which isn't terribly unusual in the Third Horizon for, for native wildlife to have um, uh, sort of six legs as opposed to. Well, you, you or all four of you have two. <laughs> Get in there. Oh, oh, God, I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, was there anything else you guys wanted to do while you were there? Uh, I don't sure. think so. Um, in that case, you make your way um, back to the camp. You can stoke up the fire again. It, perhaps it hasn't quite gone down yet. Um, and um, the animal can be cooked, and the others of you can eat all the, you know, the, um, pr the highly processed and dried, uh, desiccated, but still nutritious food. Um, you know, kind of nutrition bars and things like that that you found in the uh, the spaces, food rations. Um, are we uh, carrying out a, a similar um, sort of, you know, you probably, by the time you return, I think the, the light from the sun is now blue. Um, everything is cast in this blue twilight. Is there anything else you want to do as, as night approaches? There was actually talk of, you know, if you're, are you tending to travel now? Because there was talk of moving at night rather than um, during we the want day. To get, we do want to get. We want to get our money's worth out of this this lean to. So maybe we can. Um, we should maybe travel in the dark and get get our sleep now while we have the how many hours of the 
the four hours of the blue star. Mm -hmm. Just get some sleep now and then. And I haven't slept for a while, so so maybe this will be kind of my opportunity to bed down. Think, yeah, I will. I will stand guard. I will be tired tomorrow. Sure, absolutely. Um, well then, um, if everyone else is bedding down in in the kind of uh, in the blue twilight and waiting for night to come, and so is the intention when night comes, like you're getting up and and starting to move towards the east. And maybe trying to do that in kind of stages. Is that the idea? Yeah, I think so. Um, or would we want like a, tri a last trip to the watering hole first? Actually, maybe that makes more sense. <laughs> just because if, if we're moving all of our camping gear across, we go to the watering hole, we set up a temporary camp there, sort our water out, and then carry on in whatever direction seems fit. By my calculations, you have two water rations remaining um, from today's haul. So, um, uh. yeah. Yeah, we definitely want to refill that before we set off. Because Sadir and Maria need two at the moment. So that was my calculation. But Adam, Adam's good. Well, Adam for item, so. Yeah. We'd, Adam yeah, for item. <laughs> I will take one of the one of the two um rations, assuming it's that it's been boiled because I we went straight to that wreck to the north. Mm-hmm. Northeast, so I don't. I, I, yeah, I will have drunk at some point after returning to the camp. Oh yeah, I, I, I've kept. A, I've kept a tab oh, okay. here. You've, you, you're you're all good. You're all okay. set, and you have two water rations left. <clears throat> so the plan is, I'm going to stand guard in the, for for what remains of the the blue sun, and then when it goes dark, mm -hmm. we're all going to get up and move to the watering hole. You're all going to get up and move. Does this make sense? Like moving in the pitch black not in the sort of blue light like it's not it's not pitch black it is you know there is starlight um for sure it's it's quite dark admittedly perhaps it why makes don't... more sense to yeah why don't we just stay here for the night when the sun rises we'll move to the watering hole we'll start heading east in the middle of the day we will take some rest yeah there we go. I think uh, I think that makes sense. In that case, as you said, uh, um, but I think I think that's long enough that various people can take some watches. But Hamza, you seemed very intent on um, taking some watch at least. So um, so I'm going to pick on you. Cool. <laughs> um, so why don't you give me uh, an observation roll? Good old observation because, rolls. Because I'll fail it. Uh... <laughs> I will presumably have tried to borrow somebody's um, uh, Vulcan. I, I'll, I'll lend you mine. Cool. Thank you. That is one success. Okay. Um, as your, uh, what's the style of of your watch? Like, there is a fire there. Everyone else is kind of um, together under the lean to, perhaps kind of breathing hard or snoring softly, as people often do when they're ill or they're uh, or they're injured. Um, are you? The others were like walking around. Are you taking one point and observing, or or how, how are you keeping watch? I think I will. Um, I will walk in circles around the kind of perimeter of the, you know, sort of just out sure. past the firelight. Um, I will occasionally change direction. Okay. And kind That's of go back on myself so that I'm not predictable um, to anything watching. But, um, as you're carrying out your, your circuits, you hear quite close, you think, a sort of faint clinking um, on some of the where where some of the hull has collapsed in on itself, you're almost uh, there's like almost a central section that's almost like a, a kind of little mound of uh, metallic rubble. I mean, I say little, but it's it's higher up than you. Yeah. Um, and you hear a kind of clinking from it, which at first you associate with um, kind of immediately after the crash, the metal was making some very odd screeches and ticking noises and stuff as it was cooling down from its passage to the atmosphere. And you almost attribute it to that and then realize you haven't heard that sound for a day and a half. Um, what are you going to do? Um, I am going to move over to the mound and investigate. Okay, I investigate. Kind of, I mean, stand near it. I'm not going to kind of climb up. Sure. Over it. Are you being? Um, are you kind of trying to be quick? Are you trying to be silent? Are you trying to? What's your approach on this? Um, I think I think silent as much as I can. 
Sure, absolutely. Um, well, why don't you... What we're going to do now is an opposed dexterity roll. Okay. So, um, yeah. Dexterity. So you roll your dexterity, and I'll roll the dexterity of something. Okay. Taking yeah. into account my broken ribs. Um, if they provide a, a penalty to that, yes. Yeah, yeah. One success. Okay. Um, I got three. So, um, you kind of, uh, as you spin round and um, perhaps I'm imagining sort of like bringing the rifle up, um, you just perceive what looks like uh, a sort of blanketing across the stars and you kind of blink slightly and given Hamsa's uh, past concerns with the darkness among the stars, stars suddenly vanishing in a wave of blankness. Uh, I imagine perhaps that is why Hamza doesn't react quickly enough to whatever it is um, that is covering up the stars. It's not some um, kind of cosmic horror entity. It is some flesh and blood beast leaping from the top of this mound of metal at you, and it crashes straight into you, and um, it, it doesn't so much send you sprawling because it's pinning down on top of you, and you have just a vaguest sense through the faint light from the starlight above and from the campfire of talons, claws, and uh, a lithe fever, feline strength as its jaws snap towards you and six taloned claws start scraping at your body, and I think we'll end the session there for the day. Um, so, good stuff. There we go. Wonderful. Um, if you have any comments or questions, folks, please pop them into the chat for John to fling on stream for us. And in the meantime, let me do my lovely promo. Um, so, we've got links down below. YouTube, Twitch, you're watching on one, why not check out the other? We've got links to social media, to Discord, and to Patreon. Why not join us on all those? We run three weekly series. Call of Cthulhu on Mondays, Blades in the Dark on Tuesdays, and Coriolis on Wednesdays. They all start at 8pm BST. We also run monthly one-shots on the first Saturday of every month. Um, the next one is on Saturday, the 3rd of July, and will be the wonderful uh, micro-RPG Honey Heist. It does exactly what it says on the tin, and the tin is made of bears. Um, and uh, Johnny will be running that, and it'll start at 3 o'clock in the afternoon BST. That's Saturday, the 3rd of July. We are also currently doing a, um, a guest slot on the Free League Publishing Twitch, uh, which can be found at, unsurprisingly, Free League Publishing. Um, and we're running one of their games, Simba Room, uh, which we usually run as an extended campaign here. We're running a kind of spin-off series over there, and it's on every alternate Sunday um, at 3 p.m. BST. Um, it's not on this Sunday. It'll be on the. It should be on the following Sunday. But we we alternate weeks. So there we go. Everything we've done in its entirety can be found in VOD form on our YouTube. So if you want hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of actual play content with us, then hop on over there and uh, have your fill. Just have your fill. Um, cool. Oh. Exhausting promo work. Uh, telling yogurt based jokes behind the scenes, that's not very cultured. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Yep. 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 Steve I'm gives a dying <laughs> you, you can't berate Steve for that when you made your tiny dancing joke in the middle of that session. I just won't have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. I don't even know why I did that. <laughs> Don't know. Couldn't, couldn't tell you today um, why I did that. It's just something I'm going to have to take to the grave with me. Um, so uh, 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 <laughs> it's the size of about ten portions of yogurt. Oh, Is that the, the, the animal that got shot? Look, not everything has to, has to be measured by yogurt. Some things can be measured by lambs or buffets. Um, <laughs> or tapirs. Or tapirs. <sighs> <laughs> um, I worry that I have completely destroyed any seriousness that this campaign has by uh, by really really random nonsense. But um, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we're still all right. Um, how many yogurts to a buffet? Oh my um, god! Please to a do good buffet, start. or you know, <laughs> a yogurt oh. isn't really a buff. It's a breakfast buffet item, isn't it? Let's be let's be honest. You don't want to go and have like a roast dinner buffet thing with um, with a bit of yogurt. Right, so. In it. <laughs> Literally not joking around. We're going to have to do some kind of introduction video to the in jokes at some point. <laughs> sure, yeah. 
Um, and clearly we need some, um, you know, tapir based emoji for the um <laughs> for the twitch yeah. I've, I've wondered up until this point where the darkness points are being spent on and i suspect they're just being spent on unusual descriptions of size <laughs> yeah <laughs> they were definitely uh, what at least several were definitely spent on the tiny dancer joke um, <laughs> for sure um cool all right well we will be back on with coriolis uh, next wednesday folks should be so catch us next week uh, at 8 p.m. BST, this time, this place. Um, yeah. And take Not care in space. Time. Not in space. I mean, everything's in space. Isn't it? Not in space enough. Think about it. Yeah. <laughs> Think about it. Yeah. All right. See you later, folks. Take care. Bye bye.